Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Elkanen, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have Greg Guthner on the line. He's a CMT and author of The Rude Awakening. Greg, how you doing this morning? Great. Thanks for having me. Ah, glad you can be on the show. Well, tell us about The Rude Awakening and you know what service you provide. Well, The Rude Awakening is a, uh, is a morning note that goes out every morning the market's open and I basically talk trading ideas I talk some uh, longer term ideas some shorter term swing trading ideas um, you know and I base all of my research off of price action technical analysis and trends okay and fundamentals earnings rating changes how those uh, play a factor at all mm, usually not okay sticking with the technicals I, I like you already uh, <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on to a hot topic. You know, the oil stocks here. Uh, crude has uh, had its big fall. Oil stocks have been following in suit here, and uh, you know, you, you bring up a term you mentioned here in your email. You know, mean reversion. I mean, that that sometimes could be a tricky thing. But could you pick a couple issues? Tell us, you know, what you mean and what potential setups you're looking at. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, the thing with oil right now that I'm really looking at is is the narrative hasn't changed. We're still in this crash narrative with oil, yet prices have been choppy, but they've been pretty stable, hovering around $50, which has kind of led me to try to find some of these mean reversion ideas. You know, you look at like some of like the the better uh, shale producers, like you know, uh, Pioneers One, PXD. Um, the chart. <laughs> It's not great, but it's not it's not horrible. And I think like even on a day like today, you could take a shot at this maybe for a, a two three, three week uh, swing trade. Uh, Leading on to support level here, and, uh, is that is that you're out below? Let's see where all those lows come in here in PX. I mean, yeah, you're you're gonna know when you're wrong pretty quickly. <laughs> you know, I mean, like you know, it's sitting right there on that fifty day, which is uh, kind of flat and trying to turn up. So I mean, like, if if you if you want to try to take a shot in that space, I think that's the kind of the kind of chart you want to you want to try to look at. Okay, and just talk about mean reversion, the concept, and what you're lo where would the mean reversion take you to in this issue? Let me pull this up real quick. Okay. Well, with, well, with PXD, I, I would want to see a you know a a, a break above one sixty five, maybe toward one seventy, and mm -hmm. just try to get a scalp. You know, you try you see that big gap down. Uh, Mm -hmm. In the issue back in November, and, and I would love to see it pop above that. And if it can get get moving there, you might even be able to hold it a little bit longer, and maybe uh, try to hold to like 180 or something like that. Wow! But I mean, I don't think, I mean that that's kind of a longer term view. If indeed oil stays stable, you know, I mean, I would I would uh, I would try to trim trim a position like that. If I was to try to jump in and it and it started moving, I, I would take what I could get off of it, basically. Right. Well, also talking about a good risk reward ratio here. Anything else in the uh, in the oil patch that catching your attention? Well, let me see here. Uh, OAS was one of those ones that just got slammed. I mean, look back in November, <laughs> this thing was just dropping like a stone almost every single day. Um, it would be really cool if it could actually put in a a, a higher low here. Uh, at the beginning of this month, and maybe you know, try to take like fifty cents on that one. So, you, um, you, go you, ahead. You believe that? I mean, you don't think oil has to go back up to sixty, seventy dollars for these companies to be profitable? No, and I really don't think it will anytime soon. To be honest with you, I think there's just uh, there's so many factors you know to take into account with oil right now, and I and I I'm just going to expect that it's going to remain choppy around these levels and, until I'm proven wrong. Okay. Uh, do you think like what's going on in the uh, in the solar stocks? Is you think that's that that's having a an effect on the oil and the oil companies? Let's move into some so, uh, solar stocks and some potential setups. Yeah, I think it's the other way around, really. I think that uh, solar got caught up in the in the oil sell off, and uh, the charts look completely beat. You know, earlier this year, I mean, back in January, I was 100% convinced that all these solar stocks are going to completely break down. I actually compared them to 3D printers. I, you know, I mean, you saw these, this huge descending triangle forming um, in TAN, the uh, Guggenheim Solar ETF, and uh, it looked like it was going to break below there somewhere around, I think it was like January 20th, 21st, and then from there it just shot up completely, and, you know, failed breakdowns are just gorgeous trades, and you can see the huge move that these solars made, this disbelief rally that carried it all the way through February. Uh, they are pulling back right now, but um, I just think... Uh, 
they're they're really benefiting from from the news cycle. Uh, that that Chinese documentary that that seems to have gone viral uh, is is helping boost them. And I think people are really starting to believe in the solar story. You know, I mean, solar was an amazing trade two years ago when everybody thought these stocks were just complete garbage and that they were never going to do anything ever again. And so we had that huge rally that came off of there. Uh, last year they really didn't do much, and maybe this is the this is the next wave that, that that's starting uh, with with the move off the January lows. Uh, let's stop a second here on uh, first solar here. Uh, what do you think of this chart? Snuck over sixty two dollars. This was three trading sessions ago, capping a monster run here in the issue over twenty dollars. Bottom at thirty nine sixty nine on January twenty first. We hit a high of sixty two. 27 with a, the highest close we've had is 6106. Uh, what do you think of this one? I think it's a tough trade right here, obviously. I mean, I, I think it does need some time to uh, either move a little bit lower to find support or to just uh, give us a little time correction and move sideways here. I don't think I would necessarily jump in for a trade at this moment here at just below 60. I don't know what it's doing pre market, but um, I mean, it looks, I think it looks great. I think the whole yield co thing. Uh, could help sustain the rally. Uh, I like first solar and is it SPWR? Yes, that's another good. That's another good one that has a very similar chart. Although I think that's a little bit, a uh, little bit messier. But it's the same idea is what I'm seeing here. But I, I like I like all these stocks uh, longer term. Um, I think that like if you could get into SPWR, if you could if you could be patient and wait for maybe a bounce off of that 20 day. Uh, let's see what FSLR. FSLR, same thing, another bounce off the 20-day. Maybe if it, if it retreats all the way back toward 55, you could get a nice uh, buy on a green candle there. I think that would be a great trade. Uh, you short stocks? Uh, I, I don't. I'm actually not very good at it, to be honest with you. I try to stay on the long side. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, just a little bit of macro here. Uh, the dollar, uh, you know, that's what's hurt a lot of the companies here. Last earnings report, a lot of strength in the dollar. Anticipation of interest rates going up a little bit. What's your take on the dollar? Well, I mean, back in October, I was, uh, I was at a conference in New York and, uh, Richard Ross, the, uh, Chief Technical Analyst at Arbach Grayson mentioned, and this was like October 1st, before the big swoon uh, that we saw in the market and back when the dollar was really starting to get going. He said that this, this dollar rally is going to go further than anybody could imagine. And, I mean, he's been dead on. I mean, it looked overbought then. And now, I mean, the chart is just, it's really unbelievable. Um, I think that the media is kind of grabbed onto it a little too much right now, and it's starting to sort of... Uh, push stocks one way or another. I don't, I don't know if it's that big of a deal, but, um, I mean, that, that's, I've, I've, in my trading career, I've never seen a, a, a chart like that before for a currency. I mean, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on here. Uh, the banking sector, uh, some big hits in the banking sector, uh, off the stress tests. Uh, let's start with a chart of Goldman Sachs. Is Goldman Sachs something that you trade often? Uh, it, it's not, but I'll take a look at it now. I, I don't, I don't like this chart. Obviously, uh, yesterday's action was uh, was a little unexpected. It was pretty brutal. Uh, I don't, I don't like that drop below the fifty day right there and the the lower highs that we're seeing uh, that materialized in February. Um, I'm, I'm, I think that right now I want to stay away from names like this just because I think that the news cycle is going to be, you know debating higher rates, not higher rates, and I think it's going to maybe chop these stocks up a little bit too much to make them tradable, if that makes any sense. Is there any banks or regional banks that you do like? Um, I was looking at KRE earlier. Um, I think uh, regional banks might be the ones that kind of sneak higher during all this because they don't have as many eyeballs on them. Uh, I think KRE, uh, just the straight-up ETF, looks, looks decent. There's no specific ticker that I'm really looking at right now. But I think regional banks look pretty look pretty decent. It's a nice little setup. But you know, we're we're below the twenty day right now on KRE. Uh, but we could get a nice snap back today. And all time highs or uh, excuse me, uh, fifty two week highs right here toward December could be breached. That could be a really nice trade. Those could really take off. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to the biotech sector. Uh, boy, oh boy, these things have been moving. Do you trade just the IBB or do you look at individual issues? I look at individual ones. Uh, I was uh, my my readers know that we've been talking about ACAD. That was a, we're going to be taking profits on that today. Uh, 
that was a huge move yesterday, obviously, on the buyout rumors. I think it was up like 18%. Um, and I think that really solidifies that this biotech story is not over. You know, every time that I look at a chart and I say, man, you know, I don't know if this can go on anymore. That's usually a sign that, you know, we're going to get, you know, a bigger rally out of it. I, these stocks have been absolutely incredible. I think it's a great place to be trading right now because every time the market looks weak, these stocks are holding up. So I think that's huge sign. Um, tons of great charts. Uh, I mean, you could spit out biotech charts. I mean, I don't have any tickers off the top of my mind right now, but I'm sure the charts all look pretty decent. Um, let's see. Where's another one? Right G-I-L-D. G-I-L-D. Let's take a look. And do you trade options? No, no, no. Just straight up stocks. Um, I, my, my letter usually goes to um, more beginner traders, uh, retail investors. So we try to keep things as simple as possible. I usually stick to ETFs. Um, for my longer term trades and then just individual stock names. Uh, GILD, like you were saying, not the best chart. Um, one of the bigger guys. I still, I still like these. I think that like, I think this biotech rally can just continue. Um, I'm kind of scared of some of the smaller cap names that have just gone out of control, but I think the bigger guys, there's plenty of room to run. Greg, let's switch gears and talk about tech right now. Of course, tech is always really hot. What what names are on your radar in the tech sec sector? Well, I like Google right now. Um, let's pull up a chart here. Do you Sorry, look at the off. Google or the Google L? I was looking at Google. Um, okay, I'll put that up. I like. Uh, I like this little pullback we're getting. I like that. I like that breakout off that nice. It looks like almost like a, almost like an inverse head and shoulders uh, that formed uh, toward the beginning of the year. Um, so I would love a springboard move off of the twenty day here. I think we're getting. I think we're getting close to a pretty good entry in Google, Google, Amazon. Those were two stocks that just looked completely beat uh, late last year, and they've come back to life. And I definitely wouldn't bet against them. I think you can squeeze some good trades out of them. What about? What about the stock market, darling Apple? Do you think the curse of the Dow is going to sink it? Uh, I think a curse of a lot of things is going to is going to move it lower right now. I think just a there's just an oversaturation of Apple news right now. Um, you know, you have the whole Dow Dow announcement, then you have the Apple Watch, and this all came at a at a point where the stock was already getting massively overbought. Um, I think it could crawl lower for for some time. I mean, Apple is. Apple might be at a point now, and you know I'm not entirely sure where it's kind of graduating from being this you know amazing growth en engine to just being like a, a stock that performs pretty well. Um, I don't think they're going anywhere, but I don't think that we're going to see like the amazing returns of the past ten years from Apple anymore. You know, it's a, it's a Dow stock now, so you know uh, I think it's going to be attracting a different kind of investor. And I mean, right now with with the action that we're seeing and and it, what looks like, you know, a bit of a blow off top uh, from late February. I, I wouldn't be jumping into this stock right now just yet. Uh, do you have a trade set up on the short side? Uh, no, I, I mean, if I did, if I did short it right now, I think it would be a quick short. Um, I really don't short, uh, but I would, I would look to, I would uh, look to see if it, uh, if if it held that uh, 120, 118 range. Uh, um, Go ahead. Uh, you, you, uh, your latest blog, Pollution is Good for You, uh, and uh, here's <laughs> why. I sure would like to know why. It is, I guess it's good for me if I can make money. So how am I going to make right. money from pollution? Right, right, right. That's I was, I was uh, just talking about that Chinese documentary going viral and uh, tying into the whole uh, idea of the solar theme. Um, and somebody asked me, like, you know, how are they going to be setting up solar panels in in China, if the if they if the sun can't get through the smog, and I said, well, you'd set them up in the desert outside the city, obviously. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think uh, I think that uh, things like uh, alternative energy are going to be one of the overriding themes of the market over the next couple of years. That and like I think cybersecurity is is going to be a big theme this year. I think a lot of those cybersecurity stocks, you know, like uh, CYBR, uh, FI. Uh, th those are going to be they're going to be tough to buy because I think they're just going to keep on screaming higher, um, but but I think that like you know the news cycle is just going to really help those stocks move. I mean you know it's 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 just a matter of time before we we hear about like the next big breach like Target or something like that. And I think the retail investors are just going to be piling into into these names. It's going to be the hot new trade. 
Okay, we're on the line with Greg Guthner. He's a CMT and the author of The Rude Awakening. Greg, we're going to go rapid fire here on a few stocks and just pull them up up your chart, you know, okay. day, day trading. <laughs> uh, don't be nervous. We're going to make it easy for you. All uh, right, all right. Alibaba. B A Baba. Yeah, mm, the Bob stuff. Um I don't I don't want it right now. I tell you that. Um so many false starts uh, uh trying to pop above that 20-day moving average uh, back in December and then again back in January. Uh, that 20 days has been like a brick wall. Um I know it was green yesterday when the market was red. I I guess that's kind of positive, but I I'm nervous of it about it trying to get over 84 85. Fire eye. F E Y E. Uh I like Fire eye. Uh Yesterday's action was not great. I think it's a. I think it's one of those stocks again. Uh, that's that's a that's a tough trade right now. I, I don't like it how it's below the twenty day. Maybe we'll maybe we'll uh, we'll see a reversal soon. If not, uh, I would love a bounce uh, at the fifty day somewhere that's near. That's below the twenty day. So, yeah, Fire Eyes below the twenty day. It it gapped lower yesterday. I I think it was down like almost five percent. Okay. Uh, Okay. But, All right. How about uh, here's a good one for you. Disaster stock of the day. Do you have pre-market charts? Can you look at Vera Bradley VRA? VRA. That's a stock I haven't looked at in a long time. Let's pull it up. Ooh, I, I'm assuming that's an earnings miss. Big one at that. Yes. Yeah. So what are we at now? Uh, I have uh, 16 bucks roundabouts yep. pre-market. Yep. Spike down under 16, uh, down to 15 and change. Now you're just hugging the 16 dollar level here. Someone trying to cover a short here in Vera Bradley, 16. What's your take? Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, we're seeing it break below those January lows. Let me pull up a weekly of this, actually. Yeah, it's not, not going to tell you nothing. <laughs> it's not going to tell me anything? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't touch it. I mean, like, I think best scenario for longs here, if people are long this stock, is that you get some sort of capitulation selling and a, and a bounce here. But, I mean, it doesn't look good. Okay, uh, H-A-B-T, -H is that an issue? Could you pull that up on your chart and take a look? I think that is Habitat Restaurants. Habit Restaurants. Habit, oh. Okay. That's, like, that's like the West Coast um, Shake Shack, isn't it? I Yeah, I'll have to take your word for it. A little bit of a breakout here. I'm looking on the dailies here, breaking above 35 here. That's been long-term resistance here. What do you think of H-A-B-T? Well, it's a relatively new stock. It just IPO'd back in November. I love the tight coil uh, that we saw in January, February. I think it would be a cool swing trade idea if it can get going. I, I, I see here that uh, they reported earnings uh, last night, and it, it looks like it might gap lower. It's really oh, hard yeah. to tell. Yeah, actually, um, I didn't take a look at the pre-market one. That dipped down way under 31.50 here, got down to uh, 31.11, finding a little resistance at 33.50. Uh, 33 even. Oh, looking at the dailies here. Boy, got to go up to 33.86 to fill the gap. Yeah, it looks like it beat, but I mean, I think that this might be another one of those personality stocks where it's competing with uh, retail money for uh, Shaq. Um, yeah, I, I think that it, need, it just needs more time. I mean, it's a newer issue. Uh, it, it could get choppy. Uh, but I mean, I, I love that coil. I, I just don't know what it's going to do today. Um, it's it, it's probably a little bit overextended uh, to try to take a swing at this point. But um, I, I think it could set up down the road. I think this is another one of those big themes. Uh, you know, old school fast food stocks just getting hammered uh, for the most part, and these new better food stocks, you know, moving in on their turf. Um, you know, you could lump that into the whole millennial theme too. Uh, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. I think these stocks are going to do well in the long term. Okay, just final thoughts on the overall market. Kind of got the beach yesterday. Uh, you know, a little Friday got the beach. Monday we leave here. We're trying to get a little bit of a re rally, but looks like we're losing altitude now as we speak. Just overall thoughts on the market. Yeah, I think I think uh, the news is getting a little bit too loud uh, for some investors. Um, I think we could pull back maybe a little further from here, but over the next month or two, I'm I'm still pretty bullish. Uh, on stocks and, and the market overall, um, you know, especially like if you look at like small caps, uh, the Russell IWM held up a little bit better than uh, the broad market did yesterday. I think that's a positive sign. These these are the stocks that you know were sideways all during 2014, and if we can see this breakout in uh, IWM and uh, IWC, the micro caps, so we can see that hold. This year, I think those could be your where you look for the outperforming names uh, going forward into the spring. 
Okay, we've been on the line with Greg Gunther. He's a chartered market technician and author of The Rude Awakening, joining us here on Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Thank you very much, Greg. Have a great trading day. We'll talk to you again soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me.